Hello, my kind and lovely reader friend. I'm here with a weekly reading vlog. Hey, so it's Alora from A Few Hours in the Future. I'm older, I know more now, and I'm here to tell you that this is not actually a weekly reading vlog. This is a day in the life vlog because I got a lot of footage of the books that I bought and a lot of the fun house projects that I'm working on today, like lawn stuff and painting, etc. So this is actually just gonna be one day of reading and buying books and doing house projects. Today is Monday, June 7th, and I'm here with Miss Maple, who's off camera. So there's a lot that I could update you on. For instance, the fact that I moved and that I now own a house, uh, which is very exciting, or the fact that I finished my doctoral coursework. So I still have a practicum that I'm in the middle of, and I still have the dissertation to do, which are both very large <laughs> projects, but, um, but I finished all of the classes, which is mind-boggling to me. Or I could talk about the fact that I got a new job, which is also very exciting. But I think instead we're going to just mostly talk about books because I love books and you all love books. So I'm currently in the middle of reading two books, which are going to be put on the back burner for this particular week and reading blog um, in favor of two other books. So I'm going to first talk about the audiobook that I started listening to this morning called We Are Not Free by Tracy Chi. This book takes place in the 1940s and follows, I believe it's 13 or 14 Japanese American youth who are dealing with the repercussions of the war and the horrible internment camps in America and I've just barely started it so I really can't speak to it too much but I've only I've quite literally only heard good things about this book. I've personally never read anything from this author before but I'm listening to it on audiobook and the audiobook actually has 13 or 14 different narrators, one for each of the distinct voices, which is really exciting. So I'm really happy about that. I'll update you as we go. The other book that I'm about to pick up this week is The Silent Patient by Alex Michaelides. Obviously he's coming out with The Maidens here very soon in June. I have it pre-ordered but I've never read The Silent Patient. I've heard loads, you know, endless loads of people talk about it. Uh, and it's right up, is it up my alley? I don't really know. I don't tend to read thrillers or suspenseful books, but uh, my PhD that I'm getting is in psychology, and this is about a psychiatrist, so perhaps it will be up my alley. Who's to say? I've really always been put off by the cover because I found it deeply unsettling, which is probably the point. So it's probably a five-star cover. For any of you who don't know, which is probably very few, The Silent Patient is about a woman who murders her husband, point blank, shoots him, I believe, five times in the face, and then stops speaking. And it's also about this criminal psychiatrist who intentionally gets transferred to the psychiatric hospital where the woman is located in order to get her to talk. He's just so fascinated to the point of obsession with her case and so I'm really interested to see how that's handled, how uh, this is approached just from the perspective of somebody who is very deeply interested in the way that the human mind works. So to, if this keeps shaking it's because Maple's on this futon that I'm sitting on and she's like playing with her toy a little bit aggressively. We can just all admit that this is a bad situation right now, whatever's happening with my hair. Hi there. <gasps> Hi there. Look at those little teeth. Look at those little teeth. So cute. Anyway, let me just show you. Look at that beautiful day and that lawn that I mowed myself that is mine. My lawn. Isn't that exciting? Ah, so exciting. So anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to take this little girl for a walk. Do you want to go for a walk? <gasps> yeah, I think so. <laughs> And then later today, after the walk, um, I'm going to go to the bookstore because I have a couple of books to pick up, which is really exciting. So I'm going to go to my favorite local independent bookstore where I worked when I was in high school and early college. And then I also am going to take this wall. Yeah, look at that. Ooh. And I'm going to take this wall that I've already painted, this lovely mocha white color, and I'm going to paint an archway so that I can finally put my bed frame together and be happy and sleep well. So I probably won't do the actual painting today. My dad's coming over to help me tomorrow, but I'll probably outline it today. And yeah, those are kind of the grand plans. I will take you with me and we'll just see how things go. So you are Hal's mother, are you? 
All right, friends, let's hop in the car and go pick up some books from the bookstore. I always feel really bad when I have to put Mabel in her box, like her little bed crate, um, because she hates it, but it's too warm of a day to leave her in the car ethically, so. I'm listening on Libby to We Are Not Free. Here we go. I've made it back from the bookstore, so I have quite the uh, the book haul to share with you. So the two books that, there, there were four books that I had ordered and were sitting at the bookstore waiting for me. Uh, the first one was A Midsummer Night's Dream by Shakespeare, and it was this beautiful Pelican edition. Hi, baby! Hello! Hello! How are you? How are you? Oh, hi, 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 hi. Hi, 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 hi. Mm. Okay. So I had ordered four books from Fireside, which is my local independent bookstore, and the first one is actually a play. It's this beautiful Pelican edition of A Midsummer Night's Dream by William Shakespeare. Fun fact about me, I was actually in a play, the play version of A Midsummer Night's Dream. Well, it is a play. I, <laughs> I was in the play. I was in the play at um, Palmer High. When I was 14, I played Hermia. So there's a fun fact for you about me. The next book that I had on order was How to Pronounce Knife. I don't want to try to pronounce the author's last name because I know that I'll be wrong and I just feel like that would be really rude. But I also don't want to not try to pronounce it because I also feel like that would be rude. Suvankom Tamavangsa would be my guess. Uh, but please, if anybody knows, feel free to let me know down in the um, the comment section. And I this is actually a short story collection by this author from Laos. It says on the back that the author was born in a Lao refugee camp, uh, but she was raised in Toronto. This is a collection of short stories about the immigrant experience, and it was really great. I have actually already read it. I listened to it on audiobook, and I think one of my favorites was Manny Petty, uh, but also... Oh, it's hard to know. There were so many good ones. Picking Worms at the end was really good. The school bus driver was heartbreaking. Man, there were a lot of good ones in here, so I'm really happy to have a copy. And then I had also ordered these new editions. So they came out with these new editions for the Lunar Chronicles. And I have Cress here. And then I also... Ugh, it's so pretty. And then I also have Winter. Now I have read all of these already as they came out, I read them. I have Scarlet up there that I had purchased at a different place and I have Cinder that's on its way to me. So those are the four that I had bought in advance that I knew that I was buying. And then I also ended up getting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven other books, which is fun, right? Like we, we like supporting we like supporting the people that we love, and we love new books. So another book that I got was Love in Other Words by Christina Lauren. This was a used copy. I have already read this book via audiobook a couple years ago and really liked it. So Christina Lauren is an author duo that writes predominantly romance books, and I have had a real hit or miss experience with them. A lot of their books I've not enjoyed, but this one was about Macy and her childhood best friend Elliot. It's a second chance romance, which is a trope that is probably my personal favorite in terms of romance tropes. And I just thought it was so beautiful. I really felt like I cried. It was it was a good one. So highly recommend. I didn't have a copy, so I wanted to pick that up when I saw it. And then I ended up buying A Deadly Education by Naomi Novik. I am a diehard Naomi Novik fan, but I haven't read all of her books. And so this one came out last year to... I would say not a very great uh, reception. A lot of people did not like this and a lot of people had issues with this and it's not the kind of book that I have enjoyed from her in the past. Like my favorite of hers is Uprooted and I also really loved Spinning Silver and those are both kind of folklore retellings, folklore fairy tale retellings. And this one is not, it's like a dark magic school kind of situation, but we'll see. It's in paperback, so I decided to snag that. And then I ended up getting this beautiful, old, shiny, it kind of looks like a library book, 
uh, edition of Mary Oliver's New and Selected Poems. And this won the National Book Award and used to belong to Danielle. Oh, I don't want to show her address. That would not be very nice of me. I've read some Mary Oliver in the past and have really enjoyed her nature writing. So I think that perhaps this will be nice. Winter. And the waves gush pearls from their snowy throats as they come leaping over the moss green, black green, glass green roughage. You gotta admit, she gives you a picture. So I'm really looking forward to reading that. I was recently, recently? That's interesting. I was recently listening to Books Unbound, the podcast with Ariel and Raylene. And they had A.S. King on, and A.S. King was talking about poetry and how she loves poetry. And I was like, you know what? I also really like poetry, but I don't have any poetry on my shelves that I haven't read yet, with the exception of this giant collection of Bukowski that I've started and never finished. So I decided to get a little bit more. Okay, so the next book is called The Bookish Life of Nina Hill by Abby Waxman. And I just heard about this. I really don't remember who I heard about this from, but it's like this cute, you know contemporary romance fiction, I believe, about this woman who loves books. And I think she might work in a bookstore. Yeah, she works in a bookstore and she just, it sounds kind of delightful. You know, like one of those just lovely books that you just enjoy while sitting outside in the sun and you don't take too seriously, but you feel really good about. After that, I ended up Picking up The Oedipus Cycle by Sophocles, uh, which is Oedipus Rex, Oedipus at Colonus, and Antigone. And I didn't own this, so I... Actually, I don't even know if I've ever read the whole of Oedipus. I know that I've read portions of it uh, for literature classes in the past, and I know for a theater class that I took, get this, 11 years ago. <clears throat> almost 12 years ago at college, I... Uh, is that crazy? I, it makes me feel old. Uh, anyway, so <laughs> I watched the play version of Oedipus Rex, and so I, I'm very familiar with the story, but I don't think I've ever read it, and this is a really cool, I really like this used edition, so I got that. Two left. We are almost at the conclusion. The next thing, thing that I bought might be like a little bit cutesy, but I felt, you know, I haven't been feeling very happy lately and so I just felt like you know maybe I need something kind of cutesy in my life and this is called How to Love the World Poems of Gratitude and Hope and it just has this beautiful cover and sometimes and the edges are deckled I don't know if you can tell uh, but sometimes you know you just need to love the world a little bit you just need to feel good about things and you just need to feel hopeful so that's what this is. And then I also got, last but definitely not least, this beautiful edition. Am I the only one who adores mass market paperback, like old mass market paperbacks of fantasy books? This is how I grew up reading fantasy. Like I loved this kind of small, compact, like, you know, that smells old and just, ugh, I love it. So this is Ship of Magic by Robin Hobb. I already own a copy of this and I need to read the the first of her trilogies in this world before I can read the Live Ship Traders trilogy. But, I mean, it was less than four dollars and is beautiful and feels really good. So I felt like this was something that I really desperately wanted to own. So I'm out now. Maple is out here too. I don't know if you can see her. She's back there somewhere and I'm going to mow the lawn. So fun fact about me is that I actually love mowing the lawn. It feels so satisfying to do something that has a demonstrable result. Like it's tangible. You go back and forth and you can see that you're actually making progress and I find that to be just like gut deep satisfying. So here we go.
Side note, in the most recent book that I finished, The Anthropocene Reviewed, Essays on a Human-Centered Planet by John Green, he reviewed Kentucky bluegrass on a five-star scale. Kentucky bluegrass is the type of grass that's most common and prevalent in people's yards in the U.S. and in other countries, too. And, uh, yeah, I really like this book, but I refuse to review it on a five-star scale, which I do realize is ironic. So quick update, I'm making dinner right now. I'm doing stir-fried vegetables with a little bit of leftover rice. And I've been listening to We Are Not Free while I was driving part of the time and then also while I've been making food. So I'm about two hours in, I've listened to three of the stories or the perspectives. And I like how it is connecting one to the next to the next. Like the first one was one person. And then the second perspective was his brother. And then the third perspective was his girlfriend. And so it's kind of like this chain of people who know each other. And I think that that really adds to the story because sometimes when you have so many disparate perspectives and they're all disconnected, I feel not very grounded in the story. Like it's hard to get to know a whole new set of characters every 45 minutes worth of audiobook or every like 30 pages of a book. But when they're all kind of connected, then you already know some of the other characters and you already have seen their perspective or have seen how they're related to others. And so that's kind of helpful. So I really do like that. It is very, I don't know, I don't know if, I mean, sad. Obviously it's sad. I don't know if that's an impactful enough word. It's horrifying what happened to these citizens and just these humans that anybody could tolerated this. It was very, very horrible. And so it's uncomfortable to read and sad to read. I'm gonna show you really quickly, let me go stir my food and then show you the bookshelf situation because I think it might change. Okay, so this is the situation as it currently stands. You can probably hear the food cooking in the background, so sorry about that. But I have five of these bookshelves in my living room. And the original plan was to put the television right here, but it doesn't quite fit, so then we were going to build like a, a shelf so that we can pull the TV out since it's on a wall bracket thing. Um, but that hasn't happened yet. And so right now I have this couch here, which is a beautiful couch, but it's very long and it has a chaise on it. And so what's happened is this whole room, this living room that's not like a tiny room, feels super cramped because the bookshelves take up so much space and then the couch is so big and then we run right here into this um, which is part of the kitchen and so like the other side is the kitchen. I do also have books in my bedroom here, here, and here. In my office room I actually have ended up removing the desk and so I have some plants here, I have this couch, which I do like. I just had some guests sit staying, so there's some bedding here. I was going to do a gallery wall, which I started doing. I started putting things up with my dad. He was helping me. And then there's a closet here. This futon is going to go away. It's just, it was here while I had my grandparents staying. And then I have my favorite cabinet, and I have um, this, like, cube shelf from Target from when I was in middle school or something like that. And this whole blank wall. So what I was thinking was, I could put two bookshelves here and here, and then two more here and here, and keep one in the living room. Basically it's just not, I don't know, it's too cramped in the living room, and then the office that I was going to turn into, like a creative room of whimsy, like my office and creative space, has just turned into this weird space that I don't really use, and so I feel like maybe I should just change that and then make the office like a library and the living room more open. Anyway, those are my thoughts, but I'm going to get back to cooking my dinner. Okay, here's the other problem. I don't really feel like reading a psychological thriller suspense book. So I kind of waffled back and forth as to whether I wanted to actually start this or whether I was even in the mood for it, but I am going to sit down now with my dinner and begin reading The Silent Patient. Huh, baby? So I've been working on tidying up the kitchen, I just started the dishwasher, and I've been watching some booktube, kind of like listening to some videos. You know there are some videos that are videos that you want to watch, 
And then there are some videos, especially a lot on booktube if they're not vlogs, but they're more like list videos where you can just kind of listen and occasionally glance over. Those are the kinds of videos that I like to watch while I'm cleaning and doing things like that if I'm not really feeling in the mood for an audiobook. Anyhow, so I'm going to continue to do that while watering my plants, so I'll take you along with me. And then I think that I will settle in for the evening.